Hey guys, today's video is going to be about different things I learned from being a college level athlete and how they translate to being an artist. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've talked about this um, here and there about how I was an NCAA athlete and how things that I learned from being a self-disciplined runner have actually really helped me flourish in the art world. So if you want to hear me talk more about that and give you some tips and tricks and analogies, um, stick around and yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> So the first thing I want to talk about is practice. So some of you may have seen this coming a mile away, but um, one thing that I learned from running is that practice, practice, practice makes you a good athlete. And of course that makes sense with running, like you can't not train and then go run a marathon and expect to be good. Um, but a lot of times that idea doesn't really translate to art. And specifically when I say art, I mean a craft. Um, within the context of art. So for me, um, it's painting. And even if you're not painting representationally, there is a lot of insight you can gain just from putting um, miles in the bank. Um, and so that's a term in running where that means um, that it doesn't matter necessarily the quality of your runs or if you're doing PRs, but just getting in those miles. And the same thing applies to painting. So even if you're not making masterpieces, um, learning your craft is incredibly important and you're gonna have a more robust um, set of skills to be able to defend your work on if you practice, practice, practice. So for me, practically, um, of course, you don't have to be representational to be a good artist. You don't have to have necessarily a craft to be a good artist. Um, shout out to Duchamp. I'll include, include the, the famous fountain picture. Um, found art is obviously um, amazing, but he did, Duchamp had a background as an artist, so he understood how things read visually. Um, so for me as a painter, I do enjoy and, and prioritize painting somewhat representationally. So being able to put in those hours, um, becoming better at painting that way has helped me to not only spend a lot of time um, looking at visual stuff and learning how to translate it, but also building um, just a skill set. So definitely practice is number one. All right, analogy number two is to make sure that you invest in yourself. So what does this have to do with running? Uh, I remember learning very quickly in the beginning um, of my running career, like my freshman year of high school, um, that there were some girls who just showed up and were better than me. Um, we had similar levels of background, and, um, and in some cases they wouldn't even practice as much and they didn't run on the weekends, um, but they just showed up and just had, you know, better lungs or whatever, however you wanna think of it. Um, but I remember that these girls would kind of come and go. Um, they would show up on the team and sort of drop out or maybe like, you know, unfortunately some of them would get injured. Um, and my resiliency and my ability to be a good athlete came from my ability to just stick with it, right? So maybe I wasn't the fastest, but I stuck with it and I put in the miles and because of my um, endurance, not only lungs and heart and all that stuff, but my endurance as someone who continues to try, even though people were better than me, um, really helped me to have a career. And of course I, I was never the best runner ever, um, but I ended up becoming a pretty decent college level athlete. And I attribute a lot of that less to you know, having spectacular endurance or something and more about my ability to just stick with it. And I found that I translated that same kind of grittiness to the art world. Um, I didn't start out particularly great and um, you know, you're rough when you're new, <laughs> but I stuck with it. I did a one painting a day for two straight years and then ever since then I've painted every day um, and I'm up to almost five years. And it's that same endurance, no matter who's coming and going or who's more talented, um, you know, I don't even like to use that word, but regardless of what everyone else is doing, I focus on myself and I stay with it. And I found in both running and in art that just the ability to stick with it has um, been the backbone of both of those things. So stick with it. <laughs> Tip number three, uh, find out what about running or art is good for you outside of the competition. So with art, it's like, getting into galleries or getting um, into jury competitions, or maybe for you, it's getting a certain amount of likes on social media. Um, if you put that aside, what about painting or making art or running really benefits you? So when I was a runner, of course I wanted to do well and win races, of course I did. Um, but I remember identifying that I felt better when I ran, my brain was clear when I ran, I had teammates who were my friends when I ran, um, and I was able to work out ideas when I ran. So for me, running, of course it was great to win and, and I was really focused on that, but 
I knew that running for me had a more holistic benefit to my life. And because of that, I was able to stick with it even when I wasn't winning, or maybe there were times in my career where I was regressing, which totally happens. Um, and because of all the other benefits that I so deeply identified with, I was able to stick through it and love the sport even when things were not going my way. So with art, it's very similar. You have to identify what about making art um, helps you outside of you know winning your races. So what does that look like for you? Is that getting likes? Is that getting into competitions? Um, however you define success in art, if you didn't have that, is there still something about the art that brings you mental health or physical health or emotional health or is it an outlet for you? Um, maybe identify those things and even write them down and have them somewhere um, to look at. Um, just so you are always reminded that art can be a very holistically healing thing. And even if you're not winning, you can still be receiving tremendous benefits from your creative practice. Okay, so I spoke about this earlier. This is tip number four. Um, having teammates. So I know you're thinking, okay, in the art world, art is very isolated. How do I find teammates and what's the benefit? Um, well, in running, the benefit of having teammates is that you have someone on a similar level as you who can kind of encourage you and who's maybe going through shin splints with you. And there's a camaraderie to the fact that running is hard, right? Practice is hard. Competition is hard. Um, it's, it's worthwhile and it's fun, but it's also very difficult. And so having people who are dealing with the same things and you know, rule changes and coaching changes, um, having people on the same level as you to be able to talk through things with is tremendously helpful. And in the art world, it's gonna be harder because it is so isolated. So when I say teammates, I just mean find your crew. So for me, a lot of the people I still talk with and throw ideas past are um, people I went to college with and um, took painting classes with. I also have a group of people who we entered Instagram about the same time and so in a way, it kind of feels like my grade or my class. Um, we all kind of chat and DMs and sort of catch up with each other. And that's been really helpful. And then I even have, I'm fortunate enough to have in the town I live, live in, um, some artists that I can meet up with and grab coffee and we can just talk about art and troubleshoot ideas. And I've printed stuff out for them and they've done stuff for me. So just having people who are in your same arena and doing the same things um, to really talk with and hash ideas out with is incredibly beneficial. So find teammates, just one or two even, and it doesn't have to be in real life, um, but just having those people there to be able to help you, encourage you is tremendously valuable. Okay, number five. Um, this one is actually just applicable to life in general. <laughs> I, I say it a lot to my four-year-old and I've said it to my husband, um, but it's don't make any decisions on an uphill. <laughs> and I remember thinking this, I used to run um, a little bit north of my city growing up and it was really hilly once you got like just a little bit outside of town. And I mean, super, super duper hilly, like everything was an up or a down for the most part. And I remember <laughs> I would always swear up and down that I would cut my run short but I noticed it was always on an uphill, right? Okay, so that makes sense, duh, right? This isn't an epiphany, but it's all this to say, um, make sure that you, when you're making big decisions, check to see if you're on an uphill. <laughs> so look around, maybe maybe with art, you just got a couple of rejection letters, maybe you have a couple of big paintings that didn't turn out right, um, maybe you know someone's succeeding and you know you feel like, you should be there or, you know, name the multiple feelings you can feel as an artist that makes you feel like you're on an uphill, right? That things are working against you, that gravity is working against you. Um, make sure that you're not on an uphill when you make decisions. So, you know, whether that's I'm going to take, you know, a month off or I'm going to enter twice as many competitions. Those can be great ideas. <laughs> They're valid, but just make sure that you're not on an uphill. And if you are on an uphill, maybe just hold, hold the line. And then when you get to a place that's a little bit calmer and maybe you haven't had so many rejections or whatever you're dealing with, um, re reassess the situation. If it's still a good idea to do X, Y, Z, then do that. But just, just a little life tip, make sure you don't make big choices when you are on an uphill and check to see if you're on an uphill. It can sneak up on you. <laughs> All right, tip number six. Um, this one is really good. It's uh, basically build a lifestyle that fits your running or your art. So what does that look like? So competitive runners, um, you know, I wasn't professional, but I was collegiate, which means that I was getting my tuition um, based on my performance. So in my mind, I looked at it as this is my pay, this is my income. Um, I made sure that the rest of my life 
um, outside of maybe being a student, um, was promoted my ability to run to my best ability. So what does that look like? Okay, so for me, it was a lot of cross training. So I made sure that I was doing yoga and different things to support my core because if your core is strong, then you're a better runner. Running works your core, certainly, but the more you do things that are adjacent and just outside of running, um, the better you become. So strength training, core training, yoga, stretching, uh, physical therapy if I needed it, massage if I could get it, um, eating well, eating the right kinds of healthy foods and the abundance of foods that you need to perform well. Um, and then importantly, one thing that especially Americans tend to overlook is the importance of rest, taking time off. So in running, um, it's there's no stigma whatsoever around taking a, a post long run nap. In fact, it's kind of <laughs> expected. So you go out on a Sunday and you do 15 miles and then you come back, you, you eat a ton of breakfast and then you sleep for three or four hours. Those were <laughs> the best naps ever. And it's because people in the running world are so aware that your body has to rebuild that muscle that you just broke down. So it's a very common thing to be like, oh, I'm gonna go get a nap and you know, have it even written into your schedule, right? Um, and so the thing with art is that a lot of times we, art feels so indulgent to us that we sort of assume that it's the break, right? Um, but if we make sure to build the rest of our life to kind of complement that, um, the better your art can be when you do sit down and make art. So for me, again, it is purposeful rest. It's time off, it's time spent looking and thinking about things that just generally inspire me, even if they aren't exactly what my art is doing. Um, it's drills if you want to, you know, one thing that's really good to keep in mind is keeping up a drawing practice. Maybe if you're a painter, um, you know, having like maybe a ceramics, um, project on the side, even if you're a two dimensional artist, things that are just sort of art adjacent and they don't have to be your whole thing and you can play with them and maybe you only do it once a week. Um, but just having other things that sort of stimulate you similarly, but are different kind of like cross training. Um, having those can really help build up your practice and sort of expand what you're thinking of so that you're not tunneling in whatever you're doing. So you're not just making paintings and the things that you think are acceptable painting, you know, subjects become smaller and smaller and smaller. So the more you expand and take on other creative endeavors, cross training, um, usually you're going to, it's like, you're going to enrich what you're doing, what your main practice is. So yeah, cross train, rest, and it's always good to drink water and eat nourishing foods. But anyways, you get the analogy, right? Okay, and the final tip is make sure that in both things that you enjoy the process. Now, does this mean that every single run you're gonna love start to finish? Um, no, in fact, running is a great analogy because quite often, um, you know, the beginning is runs or most runs or some runs kind of depending on the season um, are very painful and not super pleasant. I remember in college, like when we get up super early, the last thing I wanted to do on the planet was go on a, you know, eight mile run. <laughs> it was, it didn't sound pleasant, but there were aspects of the process that I loved. So there were certain runs that I would just, <laughs> I would think, you know, my, my, my cup is full. This is so enjoyable. Like, I love this. I love this feeling. Um, and there were certain aspects of having a team and certain parts about being really, you know, feeling really aerobically fit. Just there were things that weren't there on race day that still fulfilled me. And the process still made me really happy. Exploring nature, even if I was hating my run, <laughs> still made me really happy. Um, and so find that with your creative practice. So of course you always hear, you know, focus on process. I, at least I hope that's what you're hearing because it's a very important thing to consider. Um, but focusing on your process, regardless of outcome is incredibly important. So think about what is it in your creative practice um, that makes you really happy and come alive and what fills your cup up um, even if you don't succeed in a way that you want to, right? Even if you put the end goal out of your, your mind, what about today's practice, you know, whatever, however many, two, three hours that you've carved out, what is it about that that really excites you? Maybe write those things down, really be purposeful about it. Is it the way the paint glides across the paper? Is it picking out your color? Is it setting up your potter's wheel? Is it writing out your thoughts? Like just think about and be really keyed into what is it about today? If, even if we didn't have tomorrow, what is it about today that makes me want to paint? And like I said, it doesn't always feel like going to the studio or going to, to make the art initially isn't always the most fun thing. Um, but it's really important to have an aspect of what you're doing be joyful um, and, and something that you just find a lot of pleasure in. 
Okay, those are my tips. Um, I I hope they're helpful to you. Um, I always go back. Running was kind of my first love, I guess, outside of like reading or something. But um, I started running when I was 15, almost 16. No, I was, yeah. <laughs> How old was I? I was 14 uh, when I started running and um, yeah, it was amazing. It was my first love. I didn't start out super talented by any stretch of the imaginations. I think I had a little bit of potential um, and I loved for it and I loved being outside and it just kind of ticked all my boxes. So um, yeah, I fell in love with it and I did it for a long, long time. I stuck with it and it's been one of the most fruitful things I've ever done. So um, when I was in my slump, um, <laughs> post-college graduation, um, I just keyed into all the things I love about running and applied it to art. And it was super transformative for me. So this is something that if I wanted to show something to my, how old would I have been? 22 year old self, I would show them this video because these are all the things that I eventually came to realize, um, all the parallels between one thing I loved and the other thing. And once I put them together, it just, it took off and I haven't looked back since. So I hope this video is helpful to you. I hope it's encouraging. Is there any other practice that you have that you can tie into an art practice? Is there anything, any analogies you use from things outside of the art world that are helpful to you? If they are, write them in the comments, I'm curious. Um, I've only done a couple things hardcore in my life, but I'm curious what you guys have to say and what you think. Um, and yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. I'm hoping to do more of these like long form videos, but um, yeah, I hope that helps you and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.